The Bank of Canada will announce its latest interest rate decision tomorrow. The bank has already hiked rates 10 times since March of 2022 in a bid to bring down inflation. Several premiers are calling on the central bank to stop those increases and urging the governor to consider the human impact. If the governor of the Bank of Canada wakes up uh, this morning and, and one of the first things he's thinking about is how will that rate increase impact British Columbians, then I think my job is done. And there isn't a premier in any province or territory that believes that the Bank of Canada should raise interest rates. You want to watch people go bankrupt and lose their homes? Just raise the interest rates. It's going to be on your hands. We don't need any more interest rates being uh, raised. Jimmy Jean is the chief economist and strategist at Desjardins. Jim Stanford is an economist and director of the Center for Future Work. And they both join me now. Gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Thanks, David. So you heard Premiers Ford and EB there. Premier Andrew Fury of Newfoundland and Labrador has also written a letter to Tiff Macklem on this. Uh, Jimmy Jean, let's, let's start with you. Do you think the Bank of Canada will take the Premier's advice into its uh, rate decision for tomorrow? I think it will, not because <laughs> they wrote them a letter. Uh, I just I just think the uh, economic data makes a compelling enough case on its own. Uh, I mean, not only did you have uh, last week's GDP report uh, missing the Bank of Canada's forecast by a pretty wide stretch, but you know, we had a 0.2% contraction, the second contraction in the last three quarters, and also we had a downward revision for the first quarter. So the picture we now have for economic growth of the past few quarters is uh, much worse than what we, we used to have. And uh, as a result, and considering what we're also seeing in the job market and in appetite to hire workers to, that is diminishing, I think the Bank of Canada has enough here to kind of pause and see what happens. So, uh, uh, Jim Stanford, same letter to you. Is it the data that's going to get Tiff Macklin to press pause tomorrow, or will it be the uh, sudden influx of letters he's getting from various premiers? I'm not sure the data alone will do it, David. Uh, I mean, Jimmy has mentioned, obviously, the weak GDP numbers, uh, the weakening labor market. We're seeing growing unemployment and falling job vacancies. But remember, that's not what the Bank of Canada targets. The Bank of Canada targets one thing and one thing alone, and that's CPI inflation. And their mandate is to get it back to 2% as quickly as possible. And it's well above 2%, and in fact, it's likely increasing. It did increase last month, and it is likely to increase again not because of wages or an overheated domestic economy, more because of uh, energy prices. But the fact is, if indeed they are still going to just target inflation and nothing else, then they don't really have a strong case to cut, and they may have an increase, uh, a case to increase. Uh, whether the Premier's letters impact uh, the thinking, uh, I'm not sure. I think it is uh, important that the Premiers have, have spoken out. It's, in a way, unprecedented. And it, uh, it speaks to the pain that uh, Canadians are feeling uh, at the grassroots level uh, from coast to coast. So, uh, but on the other hand, the bank takes great pride in not listening to political leaders uh, at any level of government. So uh, I don't think they'll directly uh, be influenced by those letters, but I I'm still think it's useful that the Premier has said that. Uh, so, so, so Jimmy, uh, you know, J Jim talked just there about the pain that people are feeling because of these interest rates, and the Premier's, you know, stressed that they need to consider the human impact of these rate increases. A lot of what's driving inflation now is mortgage renewals and higher rent costs and different things which are affected by interest rates. It's not necessarily bringing the cost of food down. So what sort of impact are you seeing from the interest rates in the economy in terms of how it's affecting people? Well, we're seeing uh, uh, households struggling. Obviously, you see consumer spending uh, starting to weaken, even uh, spending on services. We saw a contraction, which is uh, very rare outside of a, a recession. We saw the saving rate go up. So people become more prudent, more uh, cautious, and that has an impact on consumer spending. So uh, the Bank of Canada does look at it. It doesn't just look at uh, the last level of the CPI. And by the way, the C last CPI print was actually pretty good when you look at the core measures, which is really what the bank kind of focuses on. We, we saw some improvement there. The headline did go up, and there's going to be some volatility because of energy prices, that's for sure. But the bank kind of knows how to look through that. But what it really wants to see is a consumer's attitude shifting, and you are seeing more and more evidence of that. Surveys are pretty adamant that uh, those interest rate hikes are causing some pain. And by the way, by the end of 2024, we'll have 66% of mortgage holders who will have renewed at a higher mortgage rate. So there's still more pain ahead. And in fact, when you think about the 18 to 24 month timeline that it takes for the a full impact to be felt, we're just about to enter that zone in September. So the upcoming months will be challenging. 
there's no need for the Bank of Canada to add more to that. So, uh, J Jim Stanford, I've, I've kind of given up on predicting what the central bank would do. I mean, they told us interest rates would stay low. They said it was transitory. Then there was the pause, and then they started the aggressive rate increases again. But when you look at where the data are right now and where the politics is on this right now, what do you think Tiff Macklem and them will do tomorrow? I, I have hesitate to, to put out a public guess myself, David. I'm in the same boat as you. Uh, again, uh, hard to read inside uh, the brain, if you like, of Mr. Macklem. Um, the data on the economic side is weak, but again, I stress, they say their role is to bring down inflation to 2% no matter what, and they conclude every public statement saying we are resolute to make sure it gets back to 2%, and just a recession alone won't stop that, particularly if the link between weakening economic conditions and lower inflation is so uncertain anyway. We could still see uh, inflation arising. Uh, another dimension is this strange perverse impact that higher interest rates themselves are having on inflation. So the fastest growing component of inflation right now is the debt on mortgages, and that is directly the result of higher interest rates. Uh, rents, uh, you mentioned, David, are also soaring, and that's also indirectly boosted by interest rates. We all know there's a housing crisis and we need more homes, yet housing construction in Canada is tanking because of a year and a half of rate increases. So. For all of those reasons, higher interest rates in a way are doing more harm than good right now uh, on the inflation battle. But whether that's enough to cause the bank to rethink its whole strategy, I'm not at all confident. Yeah, uh, Jimmy, just uh, on the economic front, your, your weekly commentary for Desjardins that went out the headline, it's starting to smell like a recession. Um, you know, are, are we there? I, I mean, you, you suggest that based on the contraction we've seen and the backward revision to a more downward number that maybe we are. I mean, do you think the country is in a recession at this point or about to be? Well, you look at, uh, for example, the uh, uh, numbers that uh, we have for uh, July, the flash estimate coming in uh, flat, and that's despite uh, some, you know, the, the, the grocery rebates, uh, that's despite some tax relief in, in, in Quebec, and you're still coming in with something flat after uh, a pretty uh, disappointing quarter uh, month in June. Uh, so our uh, current tracking tells us, and we're going to get more data, of course, but uh, as of now, it says that Q3 is shaping up to be negative, which would make it two consecutive quarters and actually three and four. Now, at that point, it starts to resemble like a recession, and you have some increases in the unemployment rate, you have weaker appetite on the part of, uh, of employers, and the job market is still tight to be sure, but it seems to be shifting. We have information, for example, uh, weekly jobless claims released by the government of Canada that, sh that are spiking up since uh, the month of May. So, uh, you know, you line up all those pieces of information and uh, certainly it could be something just temporary and the economy found, finds it, its footing as we've seen a number of times or as we've seen in the US. But I think that really this is the signal that consumers are, are in trouble and that uh, you know, they're gonna be cutting back and consumer spending is two thirds of the economy. When that happens, uh, you know, you're done for the cycle. But uh, at the same time, that's what brings you to 2% uh, inflation, and that's what brings the Bank of Canada, I believe, to be in a position to cut interest rates early in 2024. Okay, uh, cutting interest rates in early 2024, that would be interesting. So, Jim Stanford, just a, a, I guess the same sort of question to you. I mean, do you think the data shows uh, a recession is here, or a recession is still coming, or can we still get that soft landing the government's hoping for? Uh, well, the traditional definition, of course, uh, is two consecutive quarters of negative growth. So we've got one under our belt from the June, and it's hard to imagine that uh, it will get better uh, in the third quarter. So in, in that regard, I, I suspect that we will be in a technical recession, as it's called. Now, whether it's a full-on recession with hundreds of thousands of job losses or just a kind of pausing for breath, the Bank of Canada itself said that could happen. So right. in a way, this is still consistent with their, uh, with their view, with their forecast. Uh, but I do worry that we'll see something steeper and, and more painful. Okay, and, and Jimmy John, just as a final point, what do you think Tiff Macklem does tomorrow? Pause or hike? I think he pauses. Uh, having said that, he will continue to signal that they may uh, perform more hikes if needed. I think that's out of prudence. We heard the same thing in the US. I don't think uh, they want to paint themselves in a corner at this time, given that they're still uncertain. But effectively, I don't think he's gonna deliver on that, uh, on that threat.
Okay, uh, we'll see if you're right uh, early tomorrow morning. All right, thank you so much. Jimmy John is the chief economist and strategist at Desjardins. Jim Stanford is an economist and director of the Center for Future Work. Thank you, guys.